Hello everyone, my name is Trevor, I go by the Mr. Trails, welcome to the channel. In today's video, I thought we would take a look at a few builds for the Savit Warpike. I'm realizing in all of the Chainblade rework nonsense that I did not actually post anything about the Savit builds. So why not go over the weapon that was impacted the most by the Savit unique effect? Consider dropping a like for me, and if you're new, consider subscribing for more Dauntless content. Even if you aren't new, double check to make sure that you're subscribed, because you might actually not be. There is still the Hunt Pass giveaway going on for people who head over to the second channel every video you comment on gives you another entry in the giveaway as long as you are subscribed to the second channel i'll be pulling the second winner of that today be sure to get yourself entered so why is the savit warpike so important well it's pretty simple the shock warpikes kind of sucked the stormclaw ue wasn't great the drask ue tail effects aren't that desirable and the nezaga effect was defensive giving lifesteal against wounds and i would say the best shock warpike before was the nezaga pike obviously not for a trial but for general General play it's better than the Drask UE. But the Savit Pike comes along and is now the obvious favorite for shock unique effects in a lot of cases, the War Pikes being the most prevalent. We're going to go over three builds for this, a Catalyst Savagery version, a Relentless Savagery Discipline version, and a Tenacious Tough Iceborne version. And the last build is not going to require any legendary gear. So let's start with the best of the bunch, the Catalyst Savagery version. We're going to be rocking the Malkarian War Pike with Catalyst and Berserker inside. Special and mod is kind of up to preference, but the Savage Wellspring and Munitions Amplifier mod is often the strongest, and it will have the Savit Warpike bond. For the Omni Cell, we'll rock Discipline or Revenant, choice is up to you, and the Lantern is up to preference with a Catalyst inside. For the Armor, we have the Shroud Helmet with Berserker inside, the Quillshot Chest with Savagery, the Timeweave Gloves with Predator, and the Thrax Boots with Predator. The Tonics will be the Blitz and Frenzy Tonic, with your third Tonic being either the Aether Drive Tonic or the Insight Tonic. For Wounding Builds, I personally prefer the Insight Tonic. And our perk summary on this build is going to be 6 Berserker, 6 Catalyst, 6 Cunning, 6 Predator, 6 Savagery, 3 Overpower, and 3 Pulse. Instead of the 3 Overpower, you can also go for maxing out the Pulse here, but it doesn't seem to make a huge difference, if any. This build is pretty darn good, and can shred Behemoths of their HP in no time. Next up, let's take a look at our non-Catalyst build. When using Warpike on a non-Catalyst build now, you are going to want to go with Relentless, as it's a pretty efficient way to get a bunch of positive benefits which were mainly in it for the attack speed, with a bit of damage on the side in this case. We'll be rocking the Malkarian Warpike with Predator and Berserker inside, Savage Wellspring with Munitions Amplifier for the mod and the Savit Bond. Once again, we'll either use the Revenant or Discipline Omni Cells and your Lantern of Choice with Molten inside. For the armor, we have the Shroud Helmet with Berserker, the Quillshot Chest with Savagery, the Malkarian Gloves with Relentless, and the Thrax Boots with Relentless. This will give us a perk summary of 6 Berserker, 6 Cunning, 6 Predator, 6 Relentless, 6 Savagery, 3 Molten, and 3 Pulse. When Molten and Relentless are both up, you'll be at 40% attack speed, and you're at the 50% attack speed cap if you choose the Strike Lantern. You also have a ton of damage and crit stuff on top of that, which makes this a pretty solid non-catalyst build. You can still bring the Insight Tonic on the side, just to help get the wounds faster. And our final build today is going to be for the Tenacious Tough Iceborne combo. This also sort of serves as an early to mid-game build. We'll be rocking the Savit Warpike with double relentless inside. You'll probably have concussive payload as your special and the munitions amplifier mod is the first one on the Slayer's path. We're rocking the Iceborne Omni Cell and it's going to be your choice of lantern with molten inside. For the armor, we can go with the Shroud Helmet with overpower inside, the Nasher chest piece with tough inside, the Boreas Gloves with overpower inside, and the Boreas Boots with cunning inside. This perk summary would then be 6 cunning, 6 overpower, 6 relentless, 6 tenacious, 6 tough, 3 molten, and 3 pulse. You can replace one or both of the overpowers in this build to Berserker to have a bit more consistent damage. The Savit Pike is pretty solid, and while it's not exactly competing for the best overall pike, it's definitely the new best shock war pike. Thank you guys very much for watching. Consider dropping a like for me if you found this useful and subscribing if you are new. I think I'm going to make it a goal for 2022 to ramp up the content production and give myself some goals for that content each week, such as making sure I do at least one build video per week, as well as putting in more effort to make those huge videos like the complete interrupt guide. I, I didn't I didn't forget about remaking it. I've just had other things on my mind. But with the new year, it's a good time to take a look at everything I'm doing and adjust things as people do. Anyway, I've been Trevor. I go by the Mr. Trails. Catch you guys next time.